Hello, thanks for checking out my video. Today we're going to be making some stamps. To make the stamps we're going to be using these plastic poker chips, some of these little foam cutouts. Some of them have uh, adhesive on the back, some don't. So we'll be using our glue stick on some of those as well. And as we're using those materials, we'll, we will be developing our uh, fine motor skills with nice three jaw chuck or a pincer grasp, that sort of thing, as we go ahead and then use the stamps for any sort of project that we want to. Once we have the stamps, we get to use them in any way that we desire. We can make a picture out of them using um, maybe some of the floral prints and we could um, make you know an arrangement of flowers, that sort of thing, or we could use the different shapes to um, really kind of highlight some of the differences in size, big and little. Um, we can use these for sequencing and pattern recognition, square, circle, square, circle. And so we really have a lot of versatility with these materials once we put them together. So it's a really easy activity with just some pretty basic materials that we're going to be able to use in a variety of different ways as well as develop our fine motor skills. So the first thing I need to do is to get my poker chips out and to separate, I'll probably get my paper out of the way, and then to separate these little foam pieces out maybe off to the left side and keep the poker chips on the right so that we can kind of work in the middle, work our way from left to right visually and then back to the middle. And then we'll put our poker chip out there have your child use a three-jaw chuck or a lateral pinch uh, or a pincer grasp and then have them use both hands together in opposition to unscrew the glue top then to screw up the glue right there and then also using the non-dominant hand to stabilize our poker chip so we're going to stabilize the poker chip use our nice um, dynamic tripod grasp with this glue we're getting some good fine motor skills there maybe we want to maybe we want to uh, encourage a little bit more um, development of the uh, deltoids and some core strength so we'll have the stabilization of the table removed we'll kind of hold our poker chip in the air and then we will go ahead and place our foam piece on the poker chip. We're gonna press down really firmly. So it's a good opportunity to get some good proprioceptive input through your joints there, or your tendons and ligaments and all that. So here we go into the muscles, perfect. And we're gonna push that down. We're gonna leave it off to the side for that to dry. We're gonna get another one and repeat with a different foam shape. Let's do the square. Push it down and leave it off to the side. As I complete these, one thing I can do is to put similarly shaped foam cutouts um, on the same poker chip. One being the large one on one side, and I could flip it over and I can glue the small one on the other side so that when we go to use it, we can do a large square and then have a small square. So. Uh, that's one thing to keep in mind as we are completing this is that you can use your materials in different ways to get kind of a different result or a different kind of uh, targeting a different skill set um, with just these basic materials. So I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of these foam cutouts put onto the poker chips there. Maybe you can do it onto the foam cutout first a little bit. Oh, I need my other hand. Perfect. I'm going to glue it down, push it down really hard, set it off to the side, get the heart. And then we are ready to start making some patterns. I went ahead and put the matching foam shape on the back of my poker chip so that I can use the same poker chip in a variety of different ways 
any any which way I want to do it is, is a good way. So I just did that while these were drying. And we can do our pattern game now with our paint um, to make the stamps. Or this is just really an opportunity for us to freestyle a little bit. Maybe you don't want to do patterns. Maybe we're not up to... Um, up to that skill set quite yet. Maybe we were working on some vertical pen strokes and we want to turn our vertical pen strokes into flowers. Then we can definitely, you know, use our flower stamp, stamp that down, maybe add a uh, our leaf stamp, stamp that down a couple times. So that's just an easy way to kind of freestyle throughout this activity here whichever skill you want to work on um, when it comes to the sequencing or the pattern recognition or maybe you're working on something else altogether you can still use these stamps with some great fine motor skills here as we're doing this activity maybe we're even doing a little shifting placing pushing getting some good sensory input through our hands so any which way you do it is going to facilitate the development of these skills so I can start with my bowl or a, a paper plate. I'm just going to use a bowl for this. I'm just going to use one color. Um, maybe you want to switch it up if you were to do the leaf activity. Maybe you would switch it up and have a couple different colors, maybe a green or purple. Maybe you can match the colors to the foam piece. That would be uh, another way to, to switch up the activity a little bit. But for today, for me, I'm just going to use just one color and I'm only going to use a little bit of paint. I don't need a lot. Maybe just a couple drops. And then I'm going to kind of push it around a little bit. I can push it around with a paintbrush or I can use my finger, that sort of thing. But for today, I'm going to use my poker chip um, stamp that I just made and I will spread it around with that. And we want to get it really thin and not super goopy. So we want to kind of spread it out here on our paper paper plate, almost so it looks like a watercolor, just a little bit. And then maybe wipe off some of the excess stuff before we use the stamp. Now that I'm ready to use the stamp, I will clear my visual field out of the way and we'll just use just one piece of paper just this red piece of paper right here and I will get these other poker chip stamps out of the way I'll put them off to the side over here and I'm just going to use these shapes and we can do something just as simple as putting the shape onto the paper and pushing it down to say ooh, that's a circle oops I got my finger in there and we can do it again we can make a happy face there we can go on and use the star now so we can make a pattern if we want to circle circle star star go back to the circle circle and then say oh what's next circle now that we've established a pattern we can replicate the pattern or have maybe this be our model and then use the second row um, for the students so that they would then kind of match the shape right under the shape there go back to our star and we can place our materials uh, in, in different spots here so we can put say if our if our child is uh, right hand dominant we might want to put the paint on the left side so that they have to reach across the midline of their body integrate um, some some good bilateral coordination skills into their activity here and then we're going to push it down maybe stabilizing with the left hand we can put it directly in our central vision. We can put it a little bit closer to us if we need a little bit more stability, if we're trying to develop some gross motor um, skills and some 
maybe some extension of the upper extremities we would put a little further that kind of thing so we're gonna do let's see what's next the circle we need to get back to the circle placing it and holding our with our non-dominant hand circle and then we're gonna do another match we're gonna do some matching here perfect so really we're working on any skill that you want to work on we're able to work on them with these stamps we can do the visual perception with some some shape matching we can do uh, visual perception with sequencing and pattern recognition we're using our fine motor skills the whole time so it really couldn't be a better exercise for that we're working on our visual motor skills with the placement of our object we're also working on some great bilateral coordination with the non-dominant hand stabilizing our object or our um, our paper here as we manipulate our object with our dominant hand and we can even work on some language skills with the um, you know differentiating between the big circle and the small circle and again these materials are really versatile until in terms of what we can do with them so if we're done with our pattern game or we want to come back to it later and we can get some of these pieces out of the way get this paper out of the way and maybe we want to go back and work on our vertical strokes we were doing that earlier and maybe we can just quickly turn this into a, um, a flower so I will take my let's see I'll start with my leaf and I will dip that into the paint if you have an ink pad that's cool too I don't so I just use my paint and then I'm gonna make sure it's all the way covered that's pretty good and then let's put it down now we're gonna work on some spatial orientation skills also as we're putting the placement of the leaf just next to our stem yeah perfect it worked out and we're going to flip it around and put another leaf down right about there and again we're getting some good proprioceptive input as we're pushing down let's see what we got all right that works and then we can take the flower part here put it in the ink or the paint push down let me get this paint out of here put it over there switch things up a little bit it's always good to switch it up it's always good to switch it up and then we will put down correctly orient our flowers so that the uh, flower petals are pointing up vertically and we'll push that down right there hey that looks pretty good and then we can go ahead and finish the rest of these Again, this is your chance to really be creative and to use these materials in a way that you want to facilitate a certain skill with your child um, or just to really kind of facilitate a little creativity. This is a great time to use these materials to do that as well. Um, maybe you have alphabet tiles or alphabet uh, foam pieces and you want to start sequencing the alphabet you can do that you can use these um, stamps for your sight word cards that you've been making along the way you can um, use these to spell out words with your sight word card so say I have the word flower then I would find my uh, my stamps that correspond with that and I'd match so I'd go F L O W E R to match flower if I had that as a sight word card really sky the sky is the limit here on this one so this is a great time just to practice your fine motor skills in a very creative setting naturally so now that we're being creative with our assignment here we're using whatever materials we have to create stamps we can really start to kind of branch out away from our pattern games or maybe our creative art project and we can start using these as um, stamps for letters and a word of caution is that when we're using these stamps 
or when we're creating the stamps for letters, if we orient our letter correctly and then place it on, when we go to flip it over, it'll end up reversed. So when we put our, our letter on our stamp, when we're making our stamp, we actually want to put it on reversed so that when we flip over to stamp it, it's correctly oriented. And if you have spare materials lying around, you can use your foam cutouts to glue them onto other materials. I really like poker chips because they're using a, a good pincer grasp when they go to pick them up. There's some shifting involved when they place them down. Um, or you're developing really some great radial precision with the way that you're manipulating it. Uh, you can also just use other materials. So I have uh, building blocks that I like to use also for this sort of thing. And we can make um, word blocks out of, say, like a four-letter word. We would put all of our letters around the block. And then we would go and spell it. You know, if we were spelling out bowl, we would spell out B-O-W-L. So that's just another way to use these materials to facilitate the skill that you want to develop. If you would like to develop a little bit more fine motor precision, maybe we're going to use these poker chips. If you would like to start initiating some different grasp patterns and developing grasp and pinch strength, we would maybe want to use something a little bit larger like these blocks. Um, that's fine. Or even if we wanted to use these foam pieces as a, as a grip. So we would use another piece on the other side and then just use these bigger pieces as a grip that we can do also. So today we've taken just these basic materials here, these little foam cutouts um, and just some plastic poker chips. And we've worked on our fine motor skills with our placement of the of the um, foam piece onto the poker chip. We've worked on our bilateral coordination, stabilizing the piece as we glue it. Um, we've worked on our fine motor skills with holding the glue stick and maybe developing a little radial precision. And we've then moved on into a variety of different um, skills that we can we can kind of just branch off of from any direction all the way from pattern just to creative art projects um, all the way up to you know word blocks and then spelling words using our our sight word cards so we can work on all of those different skills just with some basic materials and a little creativity and I encourage everyone to just be as creative as you possibly can while you're using these materials because we're always going to be working on our fine motor skills and some good bilateral coordination. Um, and then we just get to be creative and uh, really get to explore all of the different options of these materials. It's just really important that we have fun with these materials and we don't worry about how things maybe look, you know, if it didn't quite stamp all the way or if there's a little bit of a line in between um, some of the letters, that sort of thing. We're just having fun with these materials and using them to develop our fine motor skills, our visual motor skills, our visual perception, and some great bilateral coordination. Thanks for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. Please get in touch with me if you have any questions on how to implement these strategies with your student.